Welcome to Poke Lore. This week, we're going to talk to you a little bit about Pokemon Generation 8. Last week, we gave you a little bit of a rundown, a trailer analysis about Pokemon Sword and Shield. This week, we're going to tell you a little bit about, uh, after we've had a week to let it settle in, we're going to discuss uh, what we like about the trailer, things we might not like so much, things we want to see, things we don't want to see. I, of course, am your host. You can call me Nick, and I am joined, as always, by my lovely co-host... Captain Banana Man. Captain Banana Man, the man with the loud shirt, the man with the rainbow skull. It's Ben. Uh, so, uh, I guess let's start off. Let's talk about the starters. What are your thoughts on the designs of the Pokemon Generation 8 starters that uh, they've had a week to settle in? There's lots of cool things about the starters. Yeah? Um, I noticed one thing is that they all have, like, two lobs on top of their head. And, oh, yeah? Um, there's... The, the rabbit's pretty cool. The monkey could get interesting with the stick and yeah. maybe he's a fighting type. And I like the water one the most. Nice. That rabbit one has been rule 34 so hard. Is that the rule where... I'm not going <laughs> to... <laughs> it's, it's disgusting. And if you're one of those people, you should turn off this video and Stop. seek professional help. He's the, he's the small chungus. He's the tricks <laughs> rabbit. Leave him alone. He's done nothing to you. You know what? So far, I'm team Grookey Gang. I'm all about that Grookey Gang. I'm very much enjoying the Grookey Gang memes. Just pictures of Grookey holding a fucking gun. I've, you know, I've been a Sobble guy, but lately I saw this one picture where he takes out the stick and his hair comes down like all long and fantastic, <laughs> and I'm almost a Grookey gang guy now. <laughs> Grookey gang for life, man. I'm pretty sure he's going to be the coolest one at the end of all this. I, I, I think, but so. it looks like we can agree that Scorebunny, the the least cool of all well, of them. I hope he doesn't get Delphoxed, but that's it. Yeah, I could deal... I, I don't want another Pokemon wearing a dress, holding a dumb fire stick. Yeah. Uh, a lot of speculation about Scorbunny being a fire-fighting type. We're not going to think about that. He's, he's, he he could be anything else. The other thing is, like, I saw another YouTuber, uh, I forget who it was, but he talked about how, like, sometimes soccer players or other athletes will put the tape on their nose. It doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be a fighting type. I want to say that uh, Daddy Game Freak knows better at this point oh, yeah. than to make another firefighting. But even if it is a firefighting, it's not a reason to freak out, guys. I'm sure it'll be fine. It'll, it's a, it's a, it's a starter Pokemon, so probably one of them will be competitively viable, and the other two will be trash anyway. I think there's a chance he could be fire more than firefighting. Just straight, just fire. straight up fire. Yeah. I, I can see that. I'm hoping for. We were talking about it last week a fast. Fire ground type would be cool. That'd be awesome. That's yeah, he's a rabbit. Ground type just makes sense, you know? But yeah, it would also be cool if we just got straight up, just a straight grass, straight fire, straight water again. Yep. I think that would be cool. That'd be cool. We haven't had those in since Gen 2. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's a. I mean, that's all there really is to say about the starters so far, right? Other than just being like, I like this one better. I like that one better. <laughs> Salamander. <laughs> I like the Salamander. I do hope that that's water poison. I know we've had That'd water be awesome. poison types, yes. but like... I want a cool, like, salamander, water poison type Pokemon. Um, basically, just give me... What was the... What was the... 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 Creepy looking... Poison fire type from oh, Gen 7. Oh, Sal Salazzle? Salazzle. Give me a water Salazzle. That'd be cool. Salazzle yeah. would have looked way cooler. Maybe a fat, fat water Salazzle. Give me... It gotta be chunky. Yes. It's gotta be a chunky boy. Put some meat on them bones. <laughs> and not all, like... Creepy looking. <laughs> None of that. So, a uh, little bit more looking at the trailer. Somebody in our Discord pointed out that there's this little, like, uh, it looks like a Pokeball, but it's, like, kind of looks, it's got, like, one spike going out this way and one spike going out that way. It's a logo that's on all the, it's on the gyms that we see. It's in the title itself, if you look at the logos. Do you know what I'm talking about? No, but on the gyms I saw, like, a leaf or a shoe type pattern. I wonder that's... if that's like, the type of gym, because I know what you're talking about. It looks like it was green. I wonder if that's, like, the grass-type gym. Oh, or maybe. Maybe. Yeah. But there's a... Well, tr hopefully we remember to edit in, like, a little picture of it while I'm talking, but in the in previous logos, in uh, Gen 6, they had the Megastone in the Japanese That's right, title, yes. And then they had the, the Z-Crystal in the title for Sun and Moon, so that's in the title for this game, so I don't... Obviously, it means something important. I hope it doesn't mean some kind of new, like, gimmicky mechanic, which we could talk more about that in a second, Ooh, but yeah. I'm hoping it's that, like, the whole thing this game is that there's, like, a sports arena theme, all the gems, they resemble sports arenas, you see your player character, the male player character in, like, a soccer uniform, walking out to, like, a roaring crowd, and 
there's that cool scene where the Lucario and the Tyranitar are fighting, and it's like in a... There could be a arena. crowd mechanic, maybe. I'm wondering if it's something like that, but... Hopefully that's the only mechanic they implement that's, like, yeah. game-changing yeah. in the story. Yeah, so I'm hoping that it's, like, it's MLB baseball, but for Pokemon, and that's what you that's what you see. Like, look at the, uh, the Play Pokemon logo. Yeah. I'm thinking it might be something like that. Like, just, like, this is the Pokemon League's new whole bullshit. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so let's talk. About, let's address some of these rumors that are going around online. Because as soon there's been fake Pokemon Four Chan leaks forever. Maybe like three percent of them have ever checked out, and I think it's usually just somebody makes a lucky guess. Oh yeah. Like um, I really don't believe this whole thing about armor evolutions. I don't want to. No, I, I hope it's like not it. true. If it is true, I hope it's not like a mechanic change. Or if it is a thing, I hope it's like an item, but not a held item. Or not, not, I hope it's a held item, but I hope it's not like how you have to mega evolve and it wastes the slot that way. I hope it's like if you are if you have an armor on your Pokemon or whatever, it's like holding a choice band or something. Yeah, like I it don't. boosts your defense. or. There's already an assault vest. I don't know what they can do with that. I know. But so either way, I don't want it to be a thing. Yeah. I, just, I hope it's not like a mechanic. And if it is, if it is a thing, give it to Farfetch. <laughs> don't give it to Charizard. We can talk don't about give it to a little bit. Yeah, I know where you're getting. Like yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, it's it's about time they do our. I've got justice. we got good theories going on. Here. Um, I'm trying to think what else is so. Uh, I mean, we talked about the map and everything last time, so let's just talk a little bit about things we do want to happen in this game. All right, can I just can I go on this tangent? Go on here? this tangent because you're you're already thinking All right, about it. So Gen, we're on Gen Eight right now, which is an even generation. Every even generation, we've had some sort of, like, game-changing evolution mechanic going on. Gen 2, they introduced new evolutions, Steel Explicity. Gen 4, they introduced that huge sel selection of Pokemon, the Electabuzz evolution, Magmar evolution, Chansey evolution, and so on. Gen 6, we got Mega Evolutions, which just made certain Pokemon ex evolve even further. Gen 8, maybe we're going to go back to the roots and... Start giving other Pokemon either evolutions that they needed, like Farfetch'd, Delibird. I'm looking at a poster over here. Maybe a Mr. Mime evolution, finally. Um, <laughs> Grandpa Mime. The, there's all sorts of Pokemon that need evolutions or could be more viable in battle with an evolution. Esquire Mime. Maybe even... <laughs> I have a, a really cool idea of um, Sunflora getting either a Mega Evolution or an Evolution, and it becomes Grass Fire, which is a type we haven't gotten yet, I don't think. No, but, I don't think we have gotten a Grass Fire. Yeah, so that's my little Evolution tangent. Gen 8, even generation. I hope for that as well. I desperately want that. I also, just to add on to that, I feel like you're going to disagree with me here. Maybe. Give me more Megas. Because they just, they awkwardly introduced them. And then we're like, only these Pokemon can Mega Evolve. Yeah, there's like maybe 20. Yeah, maybe so. maybe we... I have a feeling that in within Generation 8's lifespan, we're going to get Gen 4 remakes. Maybe by then, if we introduce new Megas now, maybe in Gen 4 we can get like Mega Empoleon and Mega Infernape. Because all those Gen 4 Pokemon I think are really cool. I wish they had a little bit more love. Yeah. Um, I feel like Gen 2 doesn't get enough love. I hope that there's some love for it in Gen 8. So like... Maybe Mega Typhlosion or something like that. That would be awesome. Or, yes. Yeah, evolutions of Gen Two Pokemon. Where's Where's Girafferig's evolution? Maybe they'll give do me like armored a... Girafferig. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they'll do a Gen Two and Gen Four throwback because those two we got the Gen Two remake at the same time as Gen Four. And yeah. They'll give Mega evolutions to those guys. Hopefully, I just it's weird that we get Megas for Gen One and Three. And then no other generation. So hopefully we got Mega Audino, but that's it. That's five. true. Yeah, I I was talking about the starters. Oh, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I mean, still, yeah. Let's let's five could use more love. Four obviously could use something. Five could use a lot more love. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyway, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the the actual logos for Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. So, uh, you know, you guys have probably seen people speculate about what the wolf heads mean. Uh, to death. My theory that I base on absolutely nothing is that there's only one box art legendary Pokemon. I support this idea. And it's like a wolf type cool guy. Hopefully not all fur, not like a, a like a furry wet dream, 
like uh, like in Rock Midnight form, but like a cool, like uh, just give me Star Wolf. It, oh, that's a furry one. God damn it! No, you know he kind of looks like uh, Gray. Or what's his name? Um, Guru Ruman from from Digimon. Digimon yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of which, somebody in our Discord uh, posted a picture like leaked pictures of Armor Evolution Pokemon, and it was. Uh, Is it one of the Guru Ruman? No, it was. Digimon? Remember season two of Digimon? Remember what? Vimon turned into that like red and yellow armor. It was that Flame armor. Yeah it, yeah, it was Flame Dramon's <laughs> armor on like a Lucario or something. And I was like, oh that is. God. Maybe you're too young to remember. That is like the mascot of Digimon season two. Yes. Uh, so that, if you see that image on the internet, it's not real. But um, I hope that it's like a cool, badass, like Night Wolf that maybe he has like a held item that. Or, like, some kind of key item that sword makes him sword, sword fight. Yeah. Shield form type yep. of thing. Yeah. Also, uh, n- maybe we don't abandon Ultra Space forever. Maybe there are new Ultra Beasts. It's, that was a cool mechanic to explore. Ultra Space is still there. Maybe we can still just use it. Yeah. Also, people are saying online that this game is time-based for some reason. I don't know what that... I saw somebody's, like, theory before it dropped that Gen 7 was kind of, like, space-themed, right? And we feel like they've been building up to doing a Gen 4 remake, hopefully within this generation. Palkia is the space Pokemon. Yeah. And they were like, well, this, this, this area must have, like, a big Ben type, like, giant clock. So, like, this could be, like, time-themed. And then maybe that's, like, that could have something to do with the story for maybe eventually bringing in Gen 4 remakes. I don't think that that has legs, personally. But, uh... It's a theory. It's cool to think about. Yeah. Um, I... Again, I know we've talked about it a couple times. I do really hope that they give us Gen 4 remakes this generation. Uh, especially on the Switch now that we're at that point. And if they don't, then I think we have to resign to the idea that they're just doing the Let's Go games as remakes from now on. Because presumably there will be a Let's Go Johto. I hope that it's like Let's Go Pineco and Giraffe Rig, personally. But uh, <laughs> maybe they'll just call it Let's Go Pikachu Eevee colon Johto. It'll just get more and more complicated. Oh, I hope not. But, oh, uh, no. I hope that we get real remakes on top of future Let's Go games, because I love Let's Go, but I also would like more of a traditional a remake. You know, speaking of Eevee, real quick, and I, I just remembered this, um, Eevee Evolutions, it's another Eevee generation, maybe we'll get we Dragon get, and Steel to tie into the that seems like sword it, and shield type of theme. That seems like it would be the typing we get if they're gonna go for, like, England, like, Knights of the Round Table. Exactly, yeah. Thing. I personally hope that we never get another Eeveelution, and that instead, if they want to continue that, we get a new Eevee-type Pokemon that branches out into different evolutions. Oh, no, you know, you know, no, 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 you don't want no. that? No. Oh, <laughs> no. Imagine, like, a little, like, Bisharp, <laughs> like, could, I don't know, he could be, like, a, so, like, a humanoid thing that could be, like, a knight-type if they're gonna go for that. I don't know. Maybe they'll give him a Mega. Ooh, that would be cool. Yeah. He's already really good. He is good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but so is Salamence. And you know what? Good there. Pokemon don't get Megas because they often get worse. <laughs> like well, Garchomp. Yeah. yeah. Um, Mega Tyranitar. Pokemon that don't need Megas. Snorlax. Leave my boy alone. <laughs> um, Dragonite. Actually, Dragonite could be kind of cool. Maybe. It's, it it could, it's all yeah. up in the air because they gave Tyranitar one, Salamence. Yeah. And I'm, they're already good. Uh, just to like... Let's just close this out with some more, like, speculation that we've seen on the internet. This is me getting into things I don't want. Yes. People are saying, like, what if there's a new type? There's no need for a new type. The only reason we got new types in in any game ever was because Psychic was, like, crazy overpowered in Gen 1. So we got Dark type. And then they added Steel, I guess, just because. But, um... There was a reason for Steel. There were balance reasons for them either way, even if we don't know what they are. And then we got Fairy... Because Dragon was running rampant so was in the metagame. So fighting. Gen yeah. 5 revolved around fighting That's types. true. So they so. fixed it with Fairy. And now the Tapus kind of dominate a little bit. And there are a lot of really good Fairy types. But maybe we just make more good Steel type Pokemon. Yeah, make more Steel. Like, we don't need make a new type. Good Poison types. Somebody said, what if there were Tri-type Pokemon? The day we get... I say this now and I'll accept it when it happens, obviously. But, like, I really think that it would ruin the game if we got triple typing. It would just make things a little bit Way too, too complicated. Kind of team building gets completely... Two like, types is hard enough to build a team around. Yeah, but two types makes it, like, interesting enough. And, I mean, more unique type combinations could be cool. 
Um, We're but, still missing like 10 type combinations or that's so. That's true. Yeah. Maybe we get the rest of those now. Maybe next generation we'll see how this one shakes out. Then maybe we get like... I always see people saying light type, sound type. No. I, I think we're out of things to make types yeah. out of. Eventually, we're going to run out of like abject or like uh, obtuse ideas like light type and sound type. But we're going to have to get into rabbit type Pokemon, bear type Pokemon. It's going gonna, it's gonna to become a whole thing. Secondly, people always bring this up. Every generation since before Gen 5 even, and it's Digimon's fault. Fusions. Fusions. People are always like, I want Pokemon fusions. Like, I want to fuse my Charizard with my, uh, what's it called? It's the, the waifu Pokemon. Gardevoir. Oh, I want to fuse Charizard and Gardevoir so I can finally, ha- I can finally truly, truly love my Charizard. Oh, God. Uh, I, I desperately don't want that. We, we already got fusions once, and it just did. made it hard to transfer stuff. It's true, and it's really annoying. Every time there's a new game now, I have to go find the DNA splicers. Yes. Who knows what it's going to be like trying to get uh, Dawnwing's Necrozma and mm-hmm. Duskmane Necrozma in the future. So hopefully we don't ever get that again. Um, you know what Pokemon I would like to see get some love in this generation? What? Unknown is... It doesn't... <laughs> he just exists for like... It's a gimmick. When they want to have something mysterious happen, they're like, oh, there's unknowns there. Let's maybe bring Unknown back into the lore. Let's learn a little oh, bit yeah, about yeah. Unknown, or let's do something to Unknown to make him competitively viable. Uh, I do wonder, this is a thought that just popped into my head. We always use, maybe not always, but we tend to get like a mythical pretty early on. Mm-hmm. Like the first Gen 7 Pokemon we ever saw was Magearna, remember? Yep. Um, so, uh, Melmetal, yep. Melton, do you think that's the Gen 8 like yeah, it's gotta Pokemon. be. It doesn't have a place in the decks. Yeah, or is it just like a new Pokemon we have from Let's Go that'll just be transferable? Gen 7 did a couple weird things. So like Ash Greninja, are we ever going to get another way to get Ash Greninja? And do you think Ash Greninja will be non-transferable? Assuming they do Pokemon Bank again? You can't transfer, for instance, you cannot transfer Nachi or Pichu from Gen 4. Mm-hmm. You cannot transfer it to other generations. It stays there. I think it's because of the game model, though. That's the difference. That's, yeah. Because base Greninja doesn't change between the Ash Greninja ability. Right. Hopefully they give us another way to get the Ash Greninja, though. Like, through some separate you event. You can't transfer it to Pokebank? No, you can. But I'm saying, like, oh, will okay. it be able to cross generations? We don't know yet. Well, I'm we assuming from, you could. But... We got it from 6 to 7, though. Was Ash Greninja Gen 6? Yeah. I thought Ash Greninja came from the demo from Sun and Moon. No, it was the demo from Sun, from X and Y. Ash Greninja? Yeah. I am like a thousand percent sure you're wrong about that. I'm... Because he was new in XY, and then he cycled through the anime, and then Ash got Ash Greninja in the anime, and then... That's probably why I got screwed up then. Yeah, well, that it makes sense. Either if, way... Either way, if you can put him on the bank, I'm sure you yeah. can transfer him. Well, what I guess the bigger problem I have with it is that I hope that there's a way to get him again in the future. Like, maybe you get Ash Greninja, for, that's like your bonus for signing up for Pokemon Bank, the way that you got Munium Z. Oh, Sun I Moon. see. Okay, that's Because he's mean. just going to get harder and harder for new players to get. People are going to want him, and it just makes it kind of, like, really unfair to me. There's probably going to be a weird distribution, like all the mythicals. I really hope so. I really, I really do hope so. Um... Anything else? Can you think of anything else we want to just talk about? Stuff we don't want? Stuff we don't want. That's what I've been talking about. I don't want to see a lot of the stuff that was in Let's Go come over, Mm -hmm. but I do want to see the the boxes in your bag system come back. But with the Sun and Moon style boxes where you can actually organize your Pokemon. But not that you have to go to a Pokemon Center to use the boxes. Yeah, that would be ideal. If that goes away, I'm going to be really upset, actually. um, I don't know what else there is. I, uh... I know everybody but me in the whole world seems to want random encounters, and it's already confirmed that random encounters are back, but I was really hoping that we would get the Let's Go style encounters, but I guess it made shiny hunting boring to people who actually like shiny hunting. Maybe it would be cool if you could to- toggle that on and off, though. Or maybe shinies didn't appear that way. As, maybe that would be better. As, as someone who shiny hunted enough in Let's Go... I didn't end up liking it as much as I liked I don't like shiny hunting. hunting in general, so I don't really care, I guess. But, I don't know, maybe they could, maybe they could, uh, like, toggle it on and off in the future. But, you know, I'll get my way again when we get Let's Go Generation 2. True, true. So, hopefully within the Switch's lifespan. One last piece of speculation, actually. 
because this is a good thing to think about. Uh, I think it was Junichi. No, it wasn't. A, it wasn't him. It was a uh, some Nintendo higher up, like the president of Nintendo. I can't remember his name. Said in a recent interview that the they're guy? him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think he said that they are not currently planning a a new version of the Switch. Where like Forbes reported on it in December that in twenty nineteen we were gonna get a new version of the Switch, mm-hmm. which would track. I mean, we all expect like a Switch Pro. Or, like, their version of, like, you know, PlayStation went to the PlayStation Pro, all that kind of stuff. Usually, the 3DS got, like, the new 3DS. What I personally hope happens, that they, like, surprise announce a smaller, cheaper, somehow scaled-down version of the Switch that launches on the same day as Sword and Shield. The way they announced the 2DS, and it came out the same day as... Pokemon X and Y. It was literally a Pokemon box, and uh, it wasn't eighty dollars back then. I think it launched at like one hundred thirty. But the point is that it was a cheaper option for like parents to buy their kids who wanted Pokemon. Because mm-hmm. kids, even though like grown men like us will speculate on Pokemon all day, there are probably still little kids who don't even know Sword and Shield is coming. But when they start marketing it real hard, they're gonna want it. Parents are gonna look at the Switch and go three hundred dollars. No way. And I don't think Nintendo will price drop the will price drop that. But imagine like a Two hundred dollar switch that portable have switch. Mode? Yeah, that's only por- that's only played in handheld mode, or you can buy a separate dock for it that you can play with like a pro controller or Joy Cons that you link up with Bluetooth. It basically would be like a Nintendo Vita. Yeah. Yeah. I want an. I would buy on top of having my regular Switch. I would buy a Nintendo Vita specifically just for Pokemon, because one of the things I love so much about Pokemon is that I can just take my DS. And it's super thin, it's very lightweight, and it fits comfortably in my pocket. True. The DS, or the, the Switch, does not fit comfortably in my pocket. <laughs> it doesn't I actually, even fit in my pocket. When the Switch was new, I tried putting it in my pocket, and as I was pulling it out, the Joy-Con's thumbstick caught on the inside of my pocket and broke off, and I had to buy another Joy-Con because Nintendo kept not fixing it. <laughs> so, um, I don't know, I think it would be nice to get... Yeah, like a Switch Vita. Yeah. Just imagine, and it could look really cool. It could look like a giant Game Boy Micro. Speaking of Game Boy Micro. <laughs> oh, you have your Game Boy Micro? <laughs> you want to show the class? Yeah. You know. um, all right, well, well, <laughs> well Long Boy here yeah, is getting that out. It looked just yeah. like this, except a Switch. Except for the whole thing could be a screen, and then you could just have, like, the buttons on the side. Yeah. Don't, yeah. And maybe make it, like, I don't know, it... it even if it was the same size as the Switch, but just lighter, yeah, I think that would be cool. Maybe instead of having the protruding thumbsticks, we just got two uh, indented circle pads, circle pads yeah. like the DS has. Like uh, they'd have to do something with like the design that. of the circle pad, though, because I. Yeah, I mean, like it's not a bad design. I don't know, let Nintendo figure it out. Yeah. Um, either way, that would be that's something that I think a lot of people would appreciate. It makes sense to me, but at the same time, when I look at it from like a business standpoint for Nintendo. The Switch is selling so well right now that I think they'll just look at the market and be like, people will pay $300 for this. But a, a big reason I want that is actually for, like, VGC tournaments. I'm very concerned about how those are going to be run now. Uh, because the Switch's battery life, if it's running Breath of the Wild, which is, like, when it's working as hard as it can, it lasts for just over three hours on a full charge. A VGC tournament is, like, what, 10 to 12 hours? And, uh... Say you get 500 participants. They're probably going to have all... docks set up. And then you could just take your Joy-Cons out and play it like that. Yeah, but then people have... But then they have to have monitors and TVs and, like... Uh, maybe you have to bring your dock, too. Maybe that's the rule. Because I just don't see tournament organizers buying 250 docks and 250 TVs and moving them to a convention hall. Like... I just, I don't see how that'll, how that'll They'll happen. They'll figure it out. We're not tournament organizers. Yeah. My other idea is that maybe there's a mobile app that Pokemon Bank talks to, hmm. and you can get your team on there and battle that way somehow. Or maybe even a, uh, a 3DS app that is just like a battle, like Pokemon Showdown on your DS, but it links to Pokemon Bank. Oh, interesting. That gets convoluted, because then it requires everybody to have two systems, but if you're playing VGC... You probably already have one of these, and you're going to have a Switch. I don't know. Yeah. That's, also, that's interesting. while we're talking about VGC, there's one thing I want to mention. In the background of the arena, which I'm 
that you see the Lucario and the Tyranitar playing in the trailer. Behind the Tyranitar, there's what looks like it could be like a new VGC logo above the screen in the background. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that that kind of like confirms that that's the Wi-Fi arena. So we don't have to go back to that weird digital world that we battle in front of all the... It's like you're fighting in a Pokestop. Yeah, it's no more of that. Let's just let's get real arenas <laughs> in here. And bring back the announcer. That's the other thing. Bring back the announcer. For... I could do with some announcer. Yeah. Well, we've been ranting for 25 minutes here. Uh, I don't have anything else to add to you. No. Let's get those evolutions, please. Get those evolutions. That seems to be top, top, top list for us. My number one thing is actually the battle arena, believe it or not. Yeah, yeah. And the box. Keep the box in your bag, but make it operate like a normal Pokemon game. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for tuning into this video. Um, if you like what you see, feel free to like this video. Give a little thumbs up there. Subscribe to us on YouTube. You can also follow us on Twitch. We, uh, we, we do a weekly stream on YouTube as well as Twitch uh, every Tuesday. Most weekends, sometimes a third day is thrown into the mix there as well. We're going to keep bringing you Sword and Shield information as it comes out hopefully our next few videos will be a little bit more structured we just wanted to do a quick like podcast style vlog yeah, there's not too much sword and shield information out right now we just got the trailer a little bit of gameplay yeah. explanation but that's it and i'm not expecting new inf the, the trailer gave us so much more than i was expecting for a reveal trailer that i'm not assuming we'll get any new news until may anything we get between now and then is like a blessing maybe yeah. koro koro will leak i'm hoping koro like, koro is like the god of the leaks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, something cool happened with Koro Koro in just a few weeks, I guess. But uh, anyway, guys, don't, f don't forget, if you uh, follow, subscribe, all that stuff, you can join our Discord. Uh, there's a link in the info of this video. Uh, you can get trades, you can get uh, battles, get all the information on our upcoming tournaments. We do one per month. Uh, and I guess that's all I have to shill. So until next time, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. And we will catch you in a future installment of Poké Lore Rants About Nothing. <laughs> See you guys. Peace.